So in bodybuilding and fitness culture, there are a variety of different terms used to describe someone with a muscular physique, but one stands above the rest. To be yoked means you've attained a very specific type of muscularity, resulting in a monstrous, overpowering appearance. Now, generally speaking, someone who is yoked has impressive development in five key areas, giving anyone who sees them the immediate impression that they've built up a great deal of pure brute strength over the years. So these five muscles are the neck, the traps and upper back, the side delts, the upper chest, and the long head of the triceps. Now, I'd also technically add the glutes to this list, but I wanted to focus on the upper body yoke for this video. Some folks might also add the forearms, and that's fine, but I think they're gonna get plenty of indirect work from the shrugs and rows we're about to do anyway. Now, the common theme across all five of these muscles is that they make a very quick visual impression. Having a thick neck can give you a powerful appearance even if all you see is your face, and just consider this photo of Channing Tatum with his neck photoshopped in if you don't believe me. And the traps create a similar perception of mass. If you see someone with a thick upper back and big upper traps, it immediately tells you that, yeah, that person can most likely pick some heavy weight up off the ground. Now the side delts also give that broad shouldered look. The upper chest shows thickness and taper from the side, and the long head of the triceps adds a lot of mass from the back when the arms are down, and from the front when the arms are raised up. So in this video, I wanna take you guys through the ultimate yoke workout based on my experience and what the scientific evidence has to say. So at first, we're starting with the neck. We're doing this because I think of the neck as the calves of the upper body. It's usually just tacked on at the end of the workout, if not totally skipped. And because a strong neck is fundamental to looking yoked, we're prioritizing it by putting at the beginning of the session. Several studies, including this 2005 paper, consistently find that fatigue from early exercises can reduce performance on exercises done later in the workout, regardless of whether it's a small or large muscle group. So if you wanna prioritize a given body part, you should do it earlier in the workout. So we're kicking it off with three sets of 20 plus reps on the plate loaded neck curl. Here you'll wanna use some kind of toque or beanie to protect your forehead and position the plate so the center lies directly on your forehead. You can start with a five or 10 pound plate, but most people should be able to get to the 35 or 45 pound plate within their first few months of hitting neck consistently. The thing I've been doing lately is just auto-regulating my reps according to RPE. Because with neck work, you shouldn't be overloading the cervical vertebrae too heavily. You'll mostly be working in higher rep ranges, meaning it's important to get reasonably close to failure to get enough so-called effective reps in. So I'll take my set somewhere between 20 to 30 reps, stopping once I think I've only got one or two reps left in the tank with good form. And just for the sake of time, we're gonna be supersetting these with three sets of 15 on the cable neck extension using a head harness. Now, I've talked about the neck flex in other videos, and I think it's great for training both flexion and extension in a variety of different ways, including cables, bands, and free weights. And of course, it makes hitting your neck at home really easy as well. So I wouldn't say it's a required piece of gear, but it definitely makes training the neck much easier and more effective. Trying to load plates on the back of your head is really awkward. So as many of you guys know, NeckFlex is a new sponsor here on the channel. So I'll put my affiliate link to them down below if you'd like to check it out, or if you wanna pick it up later, you can always grab it at the affiliate tab on my website to show me some support here on the channel as well. All right, up next, we're doing three sets of eight to 10 reps on the trap bar shrug. Or if you don't have access to a trap bar, you can substitute in a snatch grip shrug using a 1.5 to two times shoulder width grip. Now, one reason why I love the trap bar is because it forces your arms slightly out to the side, putting your shoulder in a more abducted position. And according to anatomical data from Johnson and colleagues, the upper traps don't run straight up and down as many people think, but actually run much closer to horizontal. This means that rather than shrugging straight up and down, you should be thinking about shrugging your shoulders up and in as if trying to touch your shoulders to your ears. And I personally find this a lot easier to do with a trap bar or by taking a wider grip. And according to a blog post from Dr. Mike Isertel, while most intermediates can make great trap gains with no direct trap work at all, most people respond best to 12 to 20 weekly sets on average. And he also mentioned that following up a set of shrugs with upright rows can really destroy the traps. So up next, we're doing three sets of 15 to 20 reps on the rope upright row. Now, a lot of people in my comments get up in arms about the upright row, despite the fact that the best evidence on the exercise clearly indicates that the upright row can be a safe and effective exercise, especially when modified properly. Now, generally, I recommend stopping somewhere around the point where your elbows reach shoulder height, which is gonna reduce impingement risk. However, when using the rope, you're granted much more freedom about the shoulder joint than what a barbell would allow. So I personally have no issue with getting in a little extra squeeze at the top by shrugging my shoulders up. And I feel my traps so much better doing them this way. Of course, we're also gonna be hitting the side delts to a large degree here, as we're not only elevating the scapulae, but also abducting the shoulder. So I think this is a great yoke builder as it effectively targets two muscles on our list. 
All right, now that we've got a solid upper trap and neck pump going, we're gonna smash the upper chest and triceps using the close grip barbell incline bench press for three sets of 10 to 12 reps. And we know from biomechanical data, that the upper pecs have remarkable leverages for shoulder flexion. And since closer grips tend to emphasize shoulder flexion over shoulder adduction, there's biomechanical grounds for thinking a closer grip will hit the upper chest more. So here I'm focusing on directing more of the load to my upper pecs through the use of a strong mind muscle connection and thinking about feeling my upper pecs pull apart on the negative. I also like to cue the press up and back toward your face as it's gonna ensure that you're actually carrying out shoulder flexion properly. And while I still retract and depress my shoulder blades with a slight arch, I'm avoiding an exaggerated arch here since it's basically just gonna flatten out the pressing angle and could slightly shift emphasis away from the upper pecs. Granted, I'd say if a more arched position allows you to overload more effectively or safely, I'm not sure it's worth splitting hairs over. Remember, total upper pec activation is actually pretty similar from zero to 56 degrees of incline, and it isn't an on and off switch. Okay, up next, we're doing three sets of 10 to 12 reps on the incline dumbbell modified seal row. I actually love the traditional seal row for the mid back because the bench forces the line of pull to be perpendicular to your torso, which is gonna maximize range of motion for the lats and overload the mid traps through scapular retraction. However, it can be a pain to set up, so I'm always looking for more convenient substitutes. So the other day I saw bodybuilding coach Matt Jansen doing these on his Instagram, and I think they're great. Just make sure you've got a pair of knee sleeves or a towel that you can lay on the top of the bench for some extra cushioning, and you wanna position the edge of the bench down toward the bottom of your chest. And you can also lay a couple plates down under your heels if you're finding it tough to get the right footing. You also wanna drive your elbows straight out to the sides to emphasize transverse abduction over extension, which is really gonna hammer the mid traps, rhomboids, and rear delts over the lats. This is a yoke workout after all. You wanna allow your shoulder blades to protract at the bottom by rounding them forward and then squeeze them together at the top. Now you could also flip the other way around, but I do find that I can get a really solid stretch and squeeze when I lean against the incline of the bench for whatever reason. All right, so up next, we're hitting three sets of 10 to 12 reps on floor skull crushers. Now, because the long head crosses both the elbow joint and the shoulder joint, it can perform both elbow extension and shoulder extension. So to maximize on its biomechanical potential, we wanna load the weight back in an arc rather than straight down to the forehead. I also like to use a more constant tension approach with this movement, as one 2017 study found that training in the mid-range while keeping constant tension on the triceps led to nearly twice as much hypertrophy as training through the full range, where tension is lost at the top. And even though there were potential issues with relative loading between the groups in this study, a mass research review article noted that a nearly two-fold increase really jumps off the page, limitations aside. Now, the reason we're doing these on the floor is that you'll be able to overload a bit heavier since the starting position is a bit higher and you won't need to worry about dropping the bar off the edge of the bench if you did happen to fail a rep. But if you find the bench more comfortable, that's perfectly okay as well. And lastly, we're rounding out the workout with three sets of butterfly machine lateral raises to an RPE of nine. Now, generally I'm working in the 15 to 20 rep range on these, uh, but again, I'm not really counting the reps. I'm just going until I think I could probably get one more rep. And here you wanna keep the shoulder in a neutral or slightly internally rotated position, raising the arms straight out to the sides. And then as you get to the point where your arms are parallel to the floor, externally rotate your arms and squeeze your traps to complete the top part of the range. So at the bottom, have your pinkies slightly up and then as you clear parallel, point your thumbs up toward the ceiling. And how high you go is gonna depend on your comfortability with the movement. I find going about three quarters of the way up overhead gives a great mix of side delt and upper trap activation. And if you don't have the lateral raise machine, you can sub in dumbbells for these, but I personally like the tension curve of the machine. I find it to be a bit smoother. So guys, before we wrap it up, I wanna give a quick shout out to Alex from the channel Alpha Destiny for drawing my attention to just how important the development of some of these muscle groups are for looking yoked. And I also wanna thank the Neckflex for showing their support here on the channel. Make sure you guys check out the link in the description box down below if you're interested in taking your neck training up a notch. Um, or you guys can always hit up the affiliate link over on jeffnipper.com for the links to all my sponsors. And you can also pick up my neck and trap training guide on my website, which I decided to knock down to just $4.99 for this video if you guys would like to have all this information put into one practical routine. So guys, don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video. All right, that's Wait, good. What? <laughs> what did you say?